Okay, hello Cloud Gurus and welcome to this lecture. In this lecture, we're gonna go ahead and create our first CloudFront distribution. So this is a lab and you will need to log into the AWS console. Okay, so here I am in the AWS management console. Um, first thing I'm gonna do is just go over to S3. And if you remember from the very start of this section of the course, we created uh, this bucket and this had a picture of me and Faye and then my brother and me with Jeff Barr. Um, so those are our two images in there. We're going to use this bucket as our origin. So this is what we're going to attach our CloudFront distribution to. So to go and get CloudFront, it's not actually under storage, it's part of networking. So if we just scroll down, you'll see it in here, networking and content delivery, and you'll see CloudFront in there. So go ahead and click on CloudFront, and that will open up our CloudFront distribution. Now you can see straight away that this is a global service. So CloudFront is across the entire world. It's not done on a regional basis. And what we want to do is go ahead and create our first distribution. We have two different types of distribution. We've got a web distribution and an RTMP distribution. I'm going to go and do a web distribution. RTMP is used for media files using Adobe, Adobe's Flash Media Server's RTMP protocol. That used to be an exam question. doesn't seem to come up uh, as much anymore, but just remember the two different types of distributions. Let's go ahead and do a web distribution. In here, we've got our origin domain name. And if you click in here, you'll be able to see all our valid origins. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to click uh, this one. So it was uh, A Cloud Guru 2019. Our origin path, if you don't know what it is, you can click in there. But essentially, if you have a directory inside your origin, so a specific uh, directory inside your bucket, uh, you can specify the path. I'm not going to go do that. Origin ID, I'm going to, uh, it's going to set me up an origin ID. It's basically sort of, um, you know, permissions to uh, access our S3 bucket. I'm going to leave that as default. Um, you can restrict your bucket access. So you can basically say that users will always access the S3 content using CloudFront URLs and not Amazon S3 URLs. Uh, and that can be quite useful um, when you're using signed URLs to restrict your content. I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to say um, no for now. Uh, and I'm going to leave basically everything as default. So you can scroll all the way down. Here's where you set your TTLs. You've got your minimum, your maximum, your default. So TTLs is just the time to live on for your objects in their edge locations. Um, we can restrict viewer access so we can say, hey, only, we only want people uh, to be able to use signed URLs um, for our CloudFront distribution. So a good example of that, say you're a media company, maybe you're like Netflix and you want to make sure that only users um, who've paid for your content uh, are able to access it. Just remember that going into your exam that you can restrict access using signed URLs or signed cookies. Uh, I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to leave, like I said, everything as default. You can actually put uh, uh, web application firewalls uh, on fr in front of your CloudFront distributions. We're going to cover off what WAFs are later on in this course. But if you already know what that is, it's basically a layer 7 firewall. So you can do that to increase the security of it. Again, I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to basically leave everything as default and click create distribution. That is going to go and create and deploy my distribution. Now this can take some time. It can take um, up to 15, 20 minutes, sometimes up to an hour. Um, it's also the similar when you go and disable it. it takes time and you need to disable it before you delete it. So I'm just going to pause the video make myself some lunch and come back when this is ready. Okay, so it's been over an hour and my distribution has now been deployed. So you can see the status down here is deployed. And we've got the ID and we've got the domain name. Now this is the domain name that we would use to connect to our CloudFront distribution. So what I want you to do is just copy that into your clipboard. I'm just gonna hit copy. And then we're gonna go over to services and we're gonna go over to S3 and we'll be able to go into our S3 bucket. So mine one was called this. And I'm going to type uh, the distribution's name forward slash and then Faye Ryan hyphen replay dot JPG into my browser. So I'm gonna paste it in here, then forward slash, so it was Faye Ryan hyphen replay dot JPG. I'm gonna hit enter and there we go. It has loaded it and loaded it very, very fast. So we now know that the distribution is working and it's loading our assets from S3. Just gonna go back over to the AWS console. If we go back over to CloudFront, again, it's always under networking. Uh, so here it is, CloudFront. I'm gonna go back in and have a look at my distribution. Now what you can do is you can click in here 
and you can go to your distribution settings and you can start editing your settings. So you can change your distribution after it's been deployed. And what I want you to really notice is this invalidation. So we can go ahead and create an invalidation and we can invalidate individual objects or entire directories um, or entire subdirectories, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so if you did something like forward uh, slash star, that would invalidate basically everything. So you can invalidate a distribution and when you're invalidating it, it just means that it's no longer going to be on the edge locations. Um, so if you get a scenario question in your exam where you're talking about, um, you know, you push out some data and then you figure out something's wrong and you do an update, but it's not, you know, showing up correctly, the way to, you know, deal with that is to create an invalidation. So let's go ahead and delete this distribution because it's not covered in free tier. So I'm just going to go in and hit disable and hit disable. And that does actually also take some time. It can take up to 15 minutes. Uh, and once it's been uh, disabled, then you can click in here and hit delete. So do do that. Don't leave the distribution. We're not going to need it for the rest of this course. So what are my exam tips? So really you just need to understand what CloudFront is at a high level. You need to understand what edge locations are. So it's a location where content's gonna be cached uh, and it's very separate to an AWS uh, region or availability zone. We have edge locations all over the world. You need to understand what an origin is and this is basically just the source um, of the files that uh, your CloudFront distribution will distribute. Uh, and this can either be an S3 bucket, can be an EC2 instance, can be an elastic load balancer or route 53, uh, it's Etc. Et then we have our distributions. So this is just the name given to the CDN, which is a collection of edge locations. And our distributions can either be a web distribution, which is the one that we just set up, or an RTMP distribution, which is used for Adobe Flash Media Streaming. And then moving on, edge locations are not just read only. So we saw that when we were looking at transfer acceleration, you can write to them too. So you can put an object on them. And objects are cached for the life of the TTL. So they're cached for the life of the time to live. And that's always in seconds. And like we just saw, you can invalidate cached objects, but you are going to be charged. So that is it for this lecture, guys. If you have any questions, please let me know. If not, feel free to move on to the next lecture. Thank you.